Greetings. Hello, everybody. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? Hey, this is Cindy Dean, and I'm here on my music page on Horn Talk Tips, Tricks, and Licks. And today I have with me my special guest is Will Alvarado, who, not unlike me, is a musician and a music teacher. And right. today, yeah, our topic today is we're going to talk about and hopefully offer some value for you, some tips, hopefully, some resources. Um, um, but if you're here watching live, ask questions, comment, join in with us. Um, let us know what your favorite tips are that you use. And we can kind of like help each other out here and use this as a Forum, forum of resources for teachers. And um, one other thing before we get too far and started is um, as we are using StreamYard right now to do this live, they just ask that you click their little link and give yourself permission to use your name so we can see your comments. Otherwise, I can't see who's commenting. So when you show up, just say hello, let us know who's here. Otherwise, I don't know who's watching. So here we go. So today, um, I think we should start off just with a little bit about Will. So um, I wanted to introduce him and welcome him to the show and just, you know, maybe have you give a little bit of your background and how you got into all of this crazy music stuff. <laughs> sure, so I've been um, a member of the Burbank Unified School District for a very long time. I just recently stepped away from BUSD, just very appreciative of all the things that they've taught me. Um, but with Burbank Unified, I went to Luther Middle School where I learned how to play my first instrument. Uh, it's where I learned how to play flute. I went to Burbank High School. I was eventually like the band president and flute um, section leader all my years there. Um, and then from there, I kind of just realized that I wanted to be a music teacher. So I was going to music school, and at the same time, I started coaching at John Burroughs High School, and eventually way, like made my way through John Muir, Luther, Burbank High School, where I eventually became the assistant director at Burbank High School, which is where Cindy Dean and I met as we were instrumental coaches. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. You were local to here with your own school, and then you were helping and working in the schools here. Yeah, so I really enjoyed learning and working through the Burbank District. At the time that I was there, a lot of the band directors we had were very good at working with each other and collaborating and creating really cool events, which I really enjoyed being a part of, kind of all those collaborative efforts. Um, but I was uh, realizing that just by you know, being, I couldn't be like the big fish in the small pond anymore. So I had to leave Burbank and I'm very happy to say that now I am a full-time music teacher at a private school that I really very much enjoy. And um, it's very different than teaching high school and middle school though, because I'm teaching elementary only now. And it's a huge difference, but I love it. Yeah. So um, as an elementary music school teacher, there's all kinds of other stuff that you know, as a band director or even a choir director that you're not necessarily doing. You're doing, um, are you doing like um, recorder and ukulele normal, yeah. your normal mm -hmm. circumstances? Yeah. So and I'm doing like general music. Like that's normally okay. what an elementary, you know, music teacher would do. And although like I studied music and I've, I've learned how to play an instrument, there were a lot of things that I wasn't fully prepared for when I first was like introduced to like, this is what the position is going to be. But once I found a little more about it, I started doing my research and I started, you know, getting resources. And I'm now teaching, you know, general music. I'm playing piano. I'm teaching singing. I'm teaching recorder. I'm teaching ukulele. Like all these other um, avenues and, and ways to be able to keep music fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the main part. Like one of the things we wanted to talk about today, too, because as you're teaching online, it changes the whole dynamic of everything. And and all kinds of teachers have had to, you know, suddenly and quickly adapt. And, and that includes um, classroom music teachers, regular music, uh, regular teachers, excuse me, and then also like private and group um, lessons and things that um, maybe aren't at the school. And um, being at the school 
um, some have resources at their disposal to help them with this and other schools have nothing, like there's no budget. So it's kind of like all around, I think some, some of it's like fend for yourself and some of it is like, like every teacher having to buy your own, re, you know, find your own resources and get your own things together and stuff. And so hopefully some of this stuff will go over. We'll at least like give a people a place to start if they were looking for new things. Cause mm -hmm. I know you were telling me just like I've done, you spent what hours looking for, things to make stuff fun, right? Yeah, I, mean I feel like when the pandemic first hit, like first when we all kind of started switching to our distance learning and learning from home, that at first there was just a moment where I was frozen. Like I was just like so shocked at what happened in the world. And I was like, so what does this mean for me? Like, what do I do now? And <laughs> so many people started just flooding like, oh, join this Facebook group and this book group, you know, Facebook group with all these people that have all these great music resources. But then I got flooded so fast. Like I, there was yeah. too much information that I couldn't keep track. I didn't know what to check. I didn't know what to test because there was just too many things out there. And so I needed to step back from that a little bit and just go to some of the tools that I already had in my own backyard, in my own pocket that I've used before. And I found that they, some of those made me very successful. Yeah. And I think like, so the biggest thing, um, I, I realized too, well, I did the same thing. So what I noticed too is, um, I think this is kind of an important part of the discussion for private music teachers too, because, um, a lot of times there's so many, um, resources uh, that when I was looking that are geared for towards piano teaching and piano teachers, which is completely, totally awesome. Um, but as a person that also teaches brass instruments or you, for example, other woodwinds and different things like that, it there's like a whole other aspect of sound and, and using Zoom and different things to teach online that I feel like we had to overcome kind of like on our own, although there was plenty of resources. So I just spent so much time going through some of those Facebook groups and different mm -hmm. online resources to try to make things work. But then you have to talk to the parents, right? So like you gave me this uh, really helpful um, paper about like how to set up Zoom, just basic mm -hmm. and, and, and rules for Zoom. And I think like a lot of music teachers don't think about that, especially like if you're teaching a, a class, if you're a music teacher in a public or private school, it's probably something that you think about a little bit more. But mm -hmm. as a private teacher, I think we sometimes we, we kind of overlook it because we're used to being in person with like a very small group or maybe just one person. Yeah. And so I think management is like a whole new thing that really has just like how you manage a classroom online is kind of like a whole completely different thing than managing a classroom in person, where I think that a lot of times, like just being in a physical space with students and being able to offer just like a hand on the shoulder, right? Like when you need someone to just kind of be with you, that offers so much to help when you're teaching in person, like just, hey, you're with me, right? Okay, cool. Redirection, right? But yeah. online, all of a sudden, we don't have that ability. And then we also don't know, is a kid messing around with the computer in the background? Is this happening? Is that happening? So I found that like from day one of upgrading my Zoom, because I went professional immediately. I wasn't yeah. about to like use the free version because it seems the Zoom is very helpful. Yeah. I got rid of annotations. I got rid of screen sharing. I got rid of every bell and whistle oh, that a yeah. kid can access because I was so tired of having to like fight them and be like, oh, somebody drew another something. Okay, let me delete it with my mouse. Like, yeah, I just couldn't we, deal. I had the same thing. I had studio class and a couple things, and I always had like one kid, and I'm, I realized later, oh, I can set this. So I had to really just go over all the settings and you know, I found helpful YouTube videos and stuff, but now I feel like I could probably create my own after <laughs> going over this. But I mean, like I would type emails to parents, okay, this is what you need to do because this is not a regular Zoom meeting, this is a music meeting. Mm -hmm. And so the sound settings need to be right. Yep. And I would type things out and it's, it's not like they don't read them, but I some, somehow some things would get lost. And then I found a, video that was already made that I didn't have to do myself that explained everything I'd already told them. And it was suddenly like, once I sent the video, 
you know, that week was so much better, but it was like experimenting and everybody has a different device. And yeah, I think mean, there's a little bit of hesitation to try a new software, to try a new program at first, because, you know, it always incorporates some kind of signing up, some kind of giving away of personal information. But I mean, fun fact, if you're on Facebook, they know everything about you, right? So right. Like, I think <laughs> you can sign up for Zoom or whatever else. I mean, me personally, not signing up for TikTok, but whatever, yeah. right? <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that's just the hesitation is just to sign up for a new program because parents right now in schools are like, oh, their classes are working on Google Classroom and these are working on Skype and these are working on FaceTime. These are working like everywhere we're working is just on a completely different avenue because so many people's educational needs and their teaching needs are met so differently from each other, right? So everyone just yeah. needs to find what works best for them. And for me, I was already very comfortable with technology. So I already had a handful of apps and, and things that I used that really streamlined me going from in-person to online. And I have to say, there's so many very helpful um, teacher, piano teacher blogs and piano teacher groups and, and, um, and everything else that they have so many resources that I've been able to adapt a lot of towards teaching other things and maybe not using them exactly like you would for piano. Uh, and maybe I can't use all of the resources, but there's plenty of apps and things um, and, and stuff that are for any instrument now. And, and just like practicing and, and um, listening. And I mean, there's even like, there was this one, there's this one game and I think it was, I found it in a band director resources mm -hmm. and it's called Chicken Scream. Chicken oh. Scream. And it's like the silliest game ever. And I, I told my students about it. We didn't end up doing it. We did it in our lesson like once or twice, I think. Yeah. And we don't do it very often, but it was just like a way to get them to play and pick up the instrument. And like when you have a beginning wind or brass um, player that like, especially brass, because they don't always have the muscle memory to pick out the hear, partials. Yeah, yeah hear the correct pitch partial. And so this was just a way to, for them to practice playing any pitch loud and soft in this yeah. game and I had some really young students and the parents were like, oh, they're having so much fun. And it was like, because I found it with this band director's list of resources, you mm -hmm. know, so it's just like me doing my own research online. Wait, Cindy, do you have a mouthpiece handy? Uh, yes, I can go Okay, down. we're gonna play a game that I do with my students, so go get oh, yours. Cool. Okay, <laughs> excuse my mess. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I have to warm up on my mouthpiece myself because I know going at it cold is not easy. I know I have, I, I have today. I confess. All right. Okay. So <laughs> okay. I'm going to buzz a song on just my mouthpiece. Oh, and God. you have to guess what it is, but it's, we're going to keep it in the beginning band books though. So, okay. You should know this one. I can't do the low notes. <laughs> no, it's all good. London Princess. <laughs> yes, you got it. All right. Give me one, Sydney. Oh, phew. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it easy. Keep it easy. Okay. Just for one second, I just want to say if you're joining us right now, thank you so much. Give um, StreamYard permission so that you can comment and we can see your comments. And if you're watching on the replay, we're going to come back and answer any questions you have. So just let us know you were here and just, you know, let us know you're here by um, just saying a uh, hashtag replay, you mm -hmm. know, so that we know that you came by and said hello. And, um, you know, please feel free, share, like, comment, um, share your tips. So mm -hmm. I, I just want to kind of put that in there every once in a while before I forget. Okay. Okay. So going on. <laughs> yep. All right. So your turn. Give me a song. Oh my God. Okay. Um. All right, Mary had a little lamb. Yay! 
yes, <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny is that out of all the instruments, like I tell people that I can play 17 different instruments because I think that's true and I can play a few more than that. The only two that I cannot do are French horn and bassoon. They're the only oh, two instruments that I've picked up and have not, like, I just did not, I couldn't do it. The mouthpiece is just so hard for me on French horn. Wait, what mouthpiece are, what? Mouthpiece are you using? The, I mean, I remember. I mean, right now on my trumpet, on my trumpet, I'm using a seven okay. C. Okay, I'm. A, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it's easier for a horn player to play a trumpet mouthpiece and a trumpet than it is always to go the other way. Although it, I do get a lot of students that switch from trumpet, so I wouldn't say it's actually impossible. Mm -hmm. But I think it just has to do. I mean. The horn has so many more intricacies, and I think bassoon is probably like that. I mean, like, how many fingerings do they have with, like, each? Well, the half holes, you know? and that's what threw me off, is that you have, like, half hole here, half hole there, and, like, skip a finger but push that little trigger. Like, Yeah, you you need an expert. I mean, <laughs> it's, there's no goofing around with bassoon. <laughs> well, I mean, what's funny, too, is so when I had first gone into college, and uh, I was studying at Los Angeles Valley College. Absolutely love that school. Great community college. Really, uh -huh. really... Uh, cool professors and a lot of resources. So I just wanted to say like, hey, I want to play bassoon. Like you don't have one in the orchestra, let me learn. So they let me take home a bassoon. And then I put it together one time and was just like, nope. Like I just couldn't figure out like why it wasn't working for me. And then the read was like $13. But then I just like let it sit around and I had the time to learn it then. So then fast, flash forward to like a couple years ago, I had a new bassoon student and I couldn't help them at all. I was like, I had the time like 10 years ago to learn this instrument, but I gave it up. So it's, I, I mean, a lot of it is like making the mouthpieces too. their, um, their double reed mouthpieces are like a whole skill by itself. I mean, they spend hours doing that. So like kudos to them. Cause you know, I have enough, you know, I just have one mouthpiece all the time and it's like, I have enough issues with that. So <laughs> yeah, so, I have an, another game. So like, there's some pretty easy games. Like you can just come up with stuff like what you're doing. That was awesome. Um, another thing I'm, I was thinking of doing like, so I, um, for really young kids, I'll use like a series of like silly things. Like I'll get animal erasers and 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 like so sometimes just playing something through like they have they keep stopping or they keep having trouble with whatever note and it's like okay let's do two measures and if you can get two measures then you know mr animal here gets to travel across like if we're at the piano right, so let, let's do it in real time because i am a beginning trumpet player so tell okay. me what do i need to do miss dean to get the animal across okay so uh Let's see. How about we do like a five note scale? So pick okay. a, a five I'll note. I'll go to G. So, so just do the five notes of the C scale, and if you play it perfectly, then you, he's going to travel across to the. No other. guarantees that I will get it perfectly, but I'll okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And so we get to celebrate and he gets to go up the hill or across the river or whatever. You just make up like some whatever story you're working on. Sometimes it like whatever song and I kind of make the song in relation to what the animals are doing. And I'll maybe have like a handful of animals. I don't know where mine, mine are not all here right now. <laughs> and we'll do it like a bunch of different times. And so like that's a good example of one because sometimes it's just like they're getting caught up on something. Mm -hmm. And once they see, and it's like the goofiest thing. And some of my kids that are a little older still think it's like hilarious, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, so we kind of do that. And then um, like sometimes it's just like, okay, you have like a two line etude and maybe it's only eight bars and it's really simple, but like they're not, getting it. So we'll do two bars at a time. I'm like, okay, we have four animals mm -hmm. and um, every two bars, if you can do it perfectly, once it's perfectly, one animal will go across. 
And my goal is to get to the end and get all four animals across. You know, it's so funny when it comes to private teaching is um, I feel like a lot of the time you kind of have to just figure out what the mistake is that your students are making sometimes yeah. because drilling is great. Like being able to do something over and over and over again. But a lot of times I think that the difficulty comes from kids maybe sometimes having like one no transition that they can't get. And it's like, it's like reading, like when you're reading a passage and there's one really hard word you don't know, it kind of throws off the understanding completely. So yeah, like yeah. sometimes identifying those little spots, right? And then doing like what yeah. you're talking about with those little spots is perfect. Yeah. You can break it down into such tiny little things. Yeah, and oftentimes with brass especially, it's like, okay, so sometimes I can't get kids to sing a pitch. I'm with I'm you. Like, I know exactly what you mean. But I'm like, if you can sing it, you're going to be able to play it. Okay, mm -hmm. let's maybe not sing. Can you hum? Can you whistle it? And I still have some kids that go like, eh, I can't do that. But you're like, okay, but I want you to sing it in your head while you play. And sometimes just that idea that they're paying more attention. Mm -hmm. And then with brass, there's so many technical things that like, it's just a thought. And so it's like, okay, well, you have to use vowels to slur up and down. And mm -hmm. instead of like, ooh, and it's up high, maybe it's, ee, ee, ee. you know, it's mm -hmm. not as closed. I mean, it's not as open. You're more closed and your tongue is in a different space, but we can't see it. So you have to think this foul. And you, and so I'll sing with them, which, you know, online, it's a little harder, but they get, they, at first they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, that's I don't. No, that's honestly <laughs> why I feel that I had so much success with teaching orchestras and teaching beginning string classes is exactly what you're talking about. You can't see what's going on inside of a wooden player or a um, brass player's mouth, but the violin, you see everything that's happening. You see the tension, you see yeah. the string crossing, you see the issues with the bow, like you see exactly what's happening, which well, is why, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, well, so one of the things like I think it's overlooked with teaching online too is like you can't always see all of their body, how they're holding their instrument, which is tricky. And so I've, I used to do like um, when I first started online with them, I would have them do stuff like, okay, shoulders up, down, up, down, shoulder rolls, um, um, twist at your waist that like they don't even have to get up from their chair maybe they can do put their instrument down and they can do arm circles or whatever it is to get their body relaxed and moving and so then maybe i can check a little bit of how they're holding it and check or piano like you can check their position before they play yeah. um you know, wrist relax. I think, well, piano has definitely been a tough one. Like I know that a lot of studios haven't wanted to take new piano students over online because of the difficulty in positions and postures. I have taken a few new piano, like three new piano students in this time and it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And I found ways, you know, to be able to help you get through it. But again, you have to utilize some technology. Like I found a great piano app that lets me plunk out on a screen in front of them where their hand should be. And then I tell them what finger. But I know yeah. one issue that I've been having a lot is like where I, cause I'm teaching like flute classes. So of course uh -huh. flutes are long, right? So I'm yeah. like, oh, I can't see your fingers. Can you get closer to the screen? And then I'll do this. And I'm like, no, I was like, I need to see your fingers. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean with horn, it's kind of the same. I'm like, you kind of need to back up a little bit more to, for, to be able to see, I can't see their hand in the bell. And so I have to be really descript about what I'm asking them, what I'm yep. talking to them about. So it's forced me to be clear because I'm not like grabbing their wrist and moving their hand for them or doing it for them. And so in some instances, I think that's one of the, it actually can be a benefit teaching online because it forces them to pay more attention. It forces them to correct their own things. But it also kind of forces us to redirect our language a little bit more and to be yeah. a little bit more straightforward and to not beat around the bush so much. Because I know that sometimes in private lessons when you're in a room, you want the kid to come up with the aha moment and you're just like, all right, what are you supposed to do? But we can't necessarily <laughs> sit online, right? And just like have it in front of the screen. So we do a little bit more of that. So how do you feel yeah. like you deal with frustrations? Because that's something that I feel like I've been dealing with a little bit more over online that I've been dealing with in person lessons with kids maybe not achieving 100% each time and them just kind of starting to like feel the frustration of, you know, all the Zoom classes. Like we've been doing this for four or five months now at this point. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, you guys who are watching, um, chime in. So just let StreamYard know you give them permission to, so we can see who you are that comments. And then feel free to comment below. And if you have some awesome tips to share, please, please go ahead and share. Yeah, I mean, frustrations. I think teaching online, sometimes, I mean, I'm comfortable using Zoom. I know some other um, private teachers seem com more comfortable using other platforms to teach, but I... I feel like even with the challenges Zoom has had, it's not as bad for me and some of the other platforms. So I've just mostly stuck with Zoom. Um, and I think it's just, I, I mean, there's stuff happens. I mean, I was using Zoom one time and um, um, because I was using my laptop in another room and it wasn't connected directly to the, my landline, um, um, you know, it like I had some issues and, but we were still okay. And then all of a sudden it wanted to update, even though I had told it to delay the update mm -hmm. and I was going to do it after because I was switching between computers or whatever. And, um, and it just kicked me off and started updating. And so we finished like on FaceTime or something, but you know, because I, um, a lot of people are using all different kinds of equipment to be on their lesson. I think sometimes that's really difficult. So like um, somebody that I hadn't had been having any problems hearing, one of my piano students, for example. And I'm like, I can't hear you. Is your volume turned all the way up? Well, one week she was using an iPad, another week they were using a phone. Um, and so it was like kind of all over the map. So I don't know that they were necessarily setting up the um, Zoom setups correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but he's well, young. It's tough. I mean, because I feel like we have to make a lot of concessions and being able to be flexible because of how this all is, right? And so yeah. like, but I've also had um, music classes where I'm just like, oh, are, are you in a car right now? Right, like, so, you know, like you get all sorts of um, things that you kind of have to deal with. Like, it's a crazy time right now. Yeah, I mean, you try to give guidelines, but you know, we can only do so much. I mean, and I think teaching online has been interesting too in the, um, in certain circumstances, because, um, for example, I, I got to see my students set up for piano mm -hmm. and I'm like, Oh, that's why you aren't getting this because your keyboard mm -hmm. doesn't do that. You don't have touch sensitivity. You don't have volume and yeah. you're putting your keyboard in all these different places. So every time, um, this one student would come for their lesson. And I'm like, okay, but your arms are really high up. That's not good for you. Where else can we set up next week? You know, like so mm -hmm. that you're positioned correctly. So you don't, you know, I mean, she's young to injure herself, but like you want good habits to instill yeah. good habits. And I mean, same thing with some of my brass students, horn players. Like we're sitting on the couch playing, our bell is going into the couch. No, find a chair, you know. Mm -hmm. And basic stuff, and even one of my students that didn't have a music stand. I'm, I'm like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> because I was teaching at a school privately. So I didn't, I mean, I'm like, okay, it, it would just be really helpful if this, if your child could get a music stand. Yeah, I know. But I feel like we do like, you have to make all these changes to like yeah. kind of meet them halfway a lot of the times. And it's like not necessarily what we like, it's not and, what we expected because like when the world turned upside down, all of yeah. a sudden we have to put ourselves into this other plane of thought out of right. nowhere. Right. And like these other things that kids might not have resources at home, yeah. which also makes it difficult. Like imagine yeah. teaching a general music class and you're like, Oh, you want to do like, you know, rhythm sticks or shakers or whatever. And you're like, Oh wait, you don't have any of those resources that I have at home. Yeah, and so sometimes I'm like, okay, how many books can you prop up your device with so that I can see you better? <laughs> or what else can you use besides your stand to put your music on so you're not looking down at yeah. the floor or whatever it is? Like, yeah. let's find another solution until we can do something. I mean, I've definitely been a huge fan of purchasing, purchasing digital copies of all my music now. So this is something that I've just been doing in the last couple of years already. So it's been very helpful um, is that I really do just have like a digital copy of every single one of my books pretty much 
um, that I use and I can share, share screen. But of course we run into the issues again, like everything runs into some kind of issue. So the issue that I run into here is, okay, if a kid continually keeps making the same mistake over and over and over again, what is he supposed to write in, in like, what is he writing on? Like, cause I can't like yeah. individually every write every single kid's PDF or whatever. Like there's only so much we can do. And the expectation is you print out your music, you keep it with you and you write notes on it. But right. like, again, like if we're not there, I mean, who knows how many kids are like, Oh yeah, I have a pencil, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, and I, um, with some of my private students, I made a few trips actually. I'm like, okay, where do they live? Okay, I'm gonna drop off a packet, a packet. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna have, you know, stickers, cause some of my kids are pretty young and they, you know, it's like rewards and it's gonna have, you know, a few things to help them kind of organize their stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, um, and I did that once, but you can't keep doing it too. So like anything that's online, any, um resources using online stuff like um i haven't ever used it if any of you t um that are watching have used it let me know um um tanara is an app um for um specifically for um studio music lessons um you can do lesson notes video assignments um scheduling and um um, so, you know, that kind of thing. So like, um, it's one app that a lot of, uh, I've noticed a lot of piano teachers have been using, um, that at some point I might try. And I know like when you have a lot of private students. And were you saying, was you saying that that helps with scheduling you said? It's, uh, it's like, uh, I'm not sure about the scheduling part. I know that you can put all your assignments on the app. Mm -hmm. For the student, you can send them videos and they can also send new videos. There's like um, calendar. So I think it might be scheduling. There's another app called Fonz. Um, the uh, uh, guitar player um, teacher um, put together and it, that one specifically for billing and scheduling. Um, and he um, offers a lot of help to other um other music teachers, but other people that teach other things can use it too, because it's like, you know, dance um, teachers, um, you know, karate, any, anybody that teaches classes or anything can use it's it. It's definitely tough. Like that's one thing that I definitely find is as a private teacher is like being able to like align up your schedule and to be able to like get it so that, you know, exactly what's going on because I definitely get text messages like, Oh, I can't do this. Can we switch to another time? And I'm like, okay, yeah. And I keep it in my head. And then I'm just like, I hit, 1 p.m. when our lesson is, and I'm, and I'm there waiting for the Zoom. I'm just like, oh, no, they rescheduled on me half an hour, like, for two days from now. And so yeah. I definitely start to lose track a little bit because I definitely, you know, have quite a few students. So it's really important to keep track of that. I've been using my, like, iCalendar to, like, literally beat me reminders because it's just so much to keep track of. But if there's an app that does scheduling and billing, sounds Yeah, cool. there's a few. So um, those are two um newer ones um that i haven't used but that i've been you know considering mm -hmm. um, and that people think very highly of nice. um and there's another um piano teacher resource that i use i i have a subscription but she has a lot of free resources and um it's a vibrant music teaching and she has like all these games and there's pdf games but she's also got um, games for teaching online. So, mm -hmm. and, and then like, um, flashcards, notes and rhythms and, and different things. Like you don't have to reinvent the wheel. She's got stuff. And then if you're in the page, I think it's, I don't know if it's available in the free version, but she has like a place for, uh, members to comment and, and like they share games they've invented. Like, so some and like, well, these resources, let's say, for example, if you were to send one to a student, would they have to sign up to be able to, no. So okay, I can down, good. yeah. So I can download one of the games that literally is just a print out, and you know maybe you need a something like a you know something to go around the board, and you need a dice or whatever. There's just different kinds of games. There's ones that are cards that you cut out. Um, she's got all kinds of games, and she's got them categorized by like um, levels. 
and um, uh, rhythm, um, note name, um, just like it's like if you have one specific thing that keeps coming up in your lesson that they're having trouble with, uh -huh. um, you can look through her list like, okay, let's look up, you know, rhythm. And she's got like some oral listening stuff like um, using solfege, for example. So all kinds of stuff, even though she's piano. So there's some vocal type things, but there's other um, people that are members that teach other things like I do um, that have found a lot of resources. And she, and she even does like, if you're a member, she has like Q and A sessions and you can set up an appointment once in a while to talk with her. And she's actually in Ireland, but she, it's like amazing all this stuff she said. And she teaches really young kids. So she has good resources for younger um, learners. That right there is one of my fears, working with like the younger, younger kids. Like I say, God bless any of our pre-K teachers, any of our <laughs> kindergarten teachers, like any of those like toddler classes, God bless you. Like I, the, the switch from middle, high school to elementary was tough enough. I love elementary age, but I just have trouble. Cause I, I taught one pre-K class and I brought all my instruments. Like I do an instrument zoo. And this was back wow. when the world was in person. And so like I started playing the trombone and like half the kids started crying. And then I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> so I mean, I was, I'm traumatized. She, I mean, yeah, I mean, any, you have to look, there's, you know, different ways to teach younger kids and, and, um, and some people that are more experienced with that. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely a skill, but there's things that you can use. And she has actually has some, um, resources that people use as small classes to teach like preschool music based on the piano, for example. Mm -hmm. So she's been like this amazing her resource. And then um, you, you mentioned script, which I actually had used before, but script.com. I mean, it's normally for books, but it's one of those book. Um, it has um, so much sheet music. Like I did not realize yeah. that it has an insane amount of sheet music. It has Suzuki books. It has um, uh, Rubank's Elementary Method. It has Arvin's book. Like it literally has just it, about everything. Yeah, it's worth paying the monthly subscription fee for because you can read other stuff too besides yeah. music. Stuff. Yeah, so it's, I think it's eight ninety nine a month, and I use it like I screen share with my students all the time. Like I literally found like every single like these are the top hundred songs you should play on this instrument for like yeah. every instrument, and so I'm just cycling through them with all my students. We found cool Disney music, and just like Cindy was saying, like I read my own books now too, just off there. Yeah, I mean there, there's this uh, noteworthy um, horn method that um, Julie Landsman who. Um, used to play in the Met and teaches at Juilliard and other places. Um, uses this John uh, this uh, Caruso method book and and that's on there. Um, and she knows how to teach it. it. Sometimes these method books, it's like if you pick them up, you don't know exactly how they were taught. But but there's things like that and there's like the Clark trumpet book and there's stuff on there that you know is useful and there, there's plenty of beginning books. And um, like you were saying, like Disney tunes and things. So it's easy mm -hmm. to find stuff. Cause I think that was the biggest problem with horn is that um, finding PDF methods, there's so many piano and voice things available, but not necessarily for horn. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that script has all the best beginning French horn, for example, books on there, but there are some, so it's not, like you can't find any but it just gives you like a wide variety like that's yeah. what i think script is good at is because i have a lot of the classical repertoire and a lot of just like very basic method books but script gave me all of the like songs with pieces in them that i could teach like pop songs and all these other things that made it a lot easier to be able to like get kids buy, to buy into and I, and and i think it's fun it, it keeps it fun for them i i've just noticed that the more stuff i do online with them that's fun. The, the more they want to keep coming back. I mean, they, we do try to work on basics and we try to work on brass warmups for the horn players and different things, but, and we do technique stuff, but we have to fill in the gaps with some of these other things. And, um, and games is one thing. And, and I said, okay, is there a song that you like that you want to learn mm -hmm. that 
maybe we can find the sheet music for and I'll rewrite it for you or something. And with that, like I use No Flight. Like I personally like the website No Flight. So I will customize, write pieces for my own students, or you can even search through a whole giant list of public scores. And yeah, and that's why you can find a lot of that music. What's funny is the other day I was doing a group class for my clarinets and trumpets. And so I didn't realize that I have a very specific formula for my lessons until I went out of order and my student corrected me. So like I didn't realize that I normally do some kind of like hand finger body warm up to start with. Then we usually watch a video and then we do our lesson and then we play a game at the end. So I was at doing my lesson. We finished our body stretch and I said, hey, um, all right, let's play a game. And my student was like, Mr. Will, we always watch a video first and then we play and then the game's at the end. And I was like, oh, OK, I'm sorry. And then I realized I'm like. Oh wait, that is my like that's my formula, and they memorized it before I did. You went out of order. How dare you? Yeah, I know, <laughs> and that's important to some kids. <laughs> I think it's good. They they like that, and they know what that's about. And I mean, like, um, I created a class for my um, horn students. Um, there's, you know, just a warm up class, just teaching warm up technique because. What I found is some of them, they don't have very long lessons for one thing, most of them. Mm -hmm. And this was just like another way to get a few more things in that they hadn't learned. But I can't hear them because I make them mute. But every once in a while I'll say, do you want to demo, demo for me? Mm -hmm. And so they will. And so that's kind of like a serious class. So then we try to do like more fun stuff if they're taking lessons from me. So we can get a I mean, few. What's so interesting too is like the tricky part is because of the delay, you also could just bite the bullet as a teacher and just be like, okay, you play, like follow me and you start playing. And then you hear their delay in your ear while you're keeping your own time and try not to get thrown off by them. So, but that's like a new skill I think I've learned is how to keep playing with out of state students. <laughs> and I feel like the delay has gotten better actually, even on just Zoom because. The other day we were playing and we were just doing like slow, a slow, like scale type warm up or something like that. I forget what exactly, mm -hmm. but he was, uh, I had this one student and there's like some things going on with his rental horn that it's like another, that's another topic for discussion. But we're trying to, I'd been trying to get him to tune it and do some different things. And we played together. We actually did play together. There was still a delay, but we did. And then he found whatever needed to be fixed to, you know, pull stuff out so that he could tune his instrument. Because when you're not there in person, that was like the biggest challenge I, I have dealt with. And I can imagine strings. I had to try to help a kid like you know, fix their violin to tune themselves. And then like, I heard the dad grab the violin and I hear in the background, I was like, oh, just twist and push in, but don't go too far. He's like, what do you mean too And you hear the string break and I'm like, uh, that's <laughs> what I meant, too far. <laughs> and then you can't help them change it because you're not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's all kinds of challenges that come up and you just have to kind of be like, oops, okay, let's <laughs> Cause and I mean, it was one day where I spent the whole lesson helping this kid had to get this new instrument cause the other one was having problems and they dropped off this one that wasn't even like any where close to what he'd been playing on, which is okay. Cause he's a beginner, but it was so out of tune. And even after him playing it for a while, it's been out of tune. And so we were working just on like, okay, this is how you tune and, it, and he knows how to do it, but it was still like mm -hmm. not, I mean, so there's a lot of issues that are easier in person for sure, yeah. but it's not impossible. And it's just taken more time. Like it's just a slower thing. And so we might spend like five minutes checking the intonation and figuring out what needs to be done so we can fix that. And I would imagine with strings, you could spend like half the lesson tuning them before you played, but um it sort of first forces them to learn how to do it because instead of like just taking it from kind of doing it yourself, they have to like start to learn, right? Yeah, so. I'm lucky enough that I taught my elementary string players before we went on distance learning how to do it. But this upcoming year, I'm teaching brand new kids how to play violin. So that's going to be a real struggle that I'm going to work on trying to figure out the best way to do that. I'm going to look up all sorts of resources and do my research again um, because starting strings from brand new while via Zoom is definitely quite a bit trickier because of how many posture things there are. 
So, yeah. you know, looking forward to what this year is going to offer. Yeah. So if you're a music teacher watching this live or on the replay and you have tips for us, for anything that doesn't have to be about strength, it could be about anything you used to do, teaching resources, stuff that's worked for you, ideas you have, things you've used, join in, you know, comment below. If you're watching the replay, you know, just do hashtag replay. Let us know you stopped by. If you want to get our list of resources that we're still kind of compiling, but um, we have a good list right now, just type hashtag resources in the comments and I'll contact you and get that out to you as soon as I can. And um, this is just that we're trying to have the conversation. We'd like the community that works in the same field to, you know, comment, share, give us your tips and feedback too, because we're not the only ones teaching. And everybody I talk to has so many like of their own unique tips and things they've learned. And, and that's kind of where, how I've gotten to be able to do things and gotten to the point I'm at now. And, you know, you started, I mean, what are you going to do when everything goes online? I mean, are you going to give up? Are you going to just dive in and, learn as you go because that's what all the regular teachers had to do and all the regular music educators had to do and so us online private teachers and that type of thing you know some people hesitated and some people didn't and um and and i think that those of us that all had to dive in or chose to dive in had you know had first whether we knew what was going on or not you know we just made huge strides and and there, we're all learning and there's and things like keep coming up like there's new resources all the time and you know like if you're a regular educator you're probably familiar with teachers pay teachers but there's all kinds of music um teaching resources that even private teachers can use and you were saying use that a lot right yep. um just pay teachers and um but if you have your own tips you can actually um apply to submit your own things on there to to sell i think too so um so there's stuff that I think people have had to create on their own that you might be able to make a little bit of extra here and there just by using that resource as a place to, you know, to sell and different things. So, mm -hmm. um, um, I do you have like so? I still think there's a lot of benefits to being online. I mean, one of the things is if you're a private teacher, you can teach somebody that's not nearby if you choose to and um, um, keep them online and, and, you know, make your day more compact and less spread out, right? Hour wise. Well, because especially living in Los Angeles, we know all about the sprawl. We know all about traffic. Like there's a lot of things that we have to deal with. So if you can still offer a quality education at a, even like a discounted rate or something, if you're online and then, you know, be able to, because we also have to advocate for ourselves and make sure we're getting paid for our own time and tra traffic and gas is something to really worry about that I when we switched back in person, I would do like, I'm going to start doing a travel fee because I could teach online. Yeah, I don't think that discounting yourself online is the answer, actually, because I feel like we're undervalued as musicians and music teachers as it is pretty often. And I've also found myself so like teaching. I had quite a few beginning first year brass students, mostly French horn. But um, I was doing twice as much online, which I think a lot of teachers were trying to figure stuff out, too. But even just planning and stuff is it takes a little bit longer and then so it's your time and it's valuable and you need to and people need to realize that and so you know to me it was like okay well if you're having trouble paying let me know and you know, you're doing a longer lesson maybe we'll do a 30 minute lesson or or whatever it is or um, um but the other thing was like i was giving them extra value because i was making playing videos for them yeah. i was actually just using my phone and because mm -hmm. I, because just like I have a better setup on the computer, but just for quick purposes and whatnot, and it was still fine. I'd make a plain video of something because, like I said, the books I was using weren't online, didn't have yeah. MP3s, whatever. I, you know, they could play along with it. I did a lot of that with duets. So I'd play both parts so they could learn each part separately and then play with the recording and it's just a private YouTube or unlisted YouTube mm -hmm. link on my YouTube page. And that was all I was doing, like just simple, really basic. So there's a lot of stuff you can do that adds value. 
yeah. uh, and especially just being having to do it kind of because you're online that I think that um, people um, don't realize that uh, they don't realize that they're not the teacher. They just don't. Um, but you're giving them this value. Mm -hmm. And so there's other things you can offer, especially as a private instructor or group instructor that people are paying you not in the school, but outside the school that you can offer um, um, as value um, that like, for example, you could have a Facebook group, you could do an online um, Zoom, uh, you know, recital. Um, maybe the horn students aren't going to have a pianist with them, but that doesn't matter. Like you could make a, you spend a lot of time and you can put a video clip together of all their videos if you ask the parents to submit them. That's like too much, like that was too much for me. I didn't want to do that. I just had them play live online, you know, and, but I could do it more often. So I could say every month we're going to try to meet at this time. And, and maybe they didn't have to have a whole piece learned. It would just be like play minimum of four bars of something you're working on that you want to share that you feel good about. And it was getting the kids that were super shy out of their shell and able to like play something for someone else, even though it was online. And some of them, I don't think would have done it in person. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you have any, like, um, do you see any other benefits for what is your take on it? Like what, what are some benefits about distant lear distance learning? Because I think a lot of times we're just thinking about all the, hardships it creates you know well, i mean i think that it's given a lot of students the opportunity to kind of pick and choose what some of their hobbies are a little bit more and to be able to just kind of focus on something like a lot of like i have way more private students than i've had in a long time and a lot of them were the ones who sought out wanting to be better at their instrument like yeah. because they're sitting at home and so they're taking the time to be productive and i really just think that it just gives you it makes you more creative it makes you really have to think on the fly of how to help these kids not only with their instrumental learning but for the fact that they lost their entire social life so yeah. we have to do a little a lot more with social emotional learning like making sure that we're paying attention to how the kids are feeling to making sure that we know what their needs are to make sure that we're changing things up here and there so that any kids who are feeling left out or already having issues because of the lack of socialness going on that we kind of find ways to get them comfortable and to you know facilitate um, that kind of learning within our music lessons. Yeah, do you have you used the acapella app at all for um, any? I have used it just for myself, just for fun, mm -hmm. um, but I've never actually tried it with students. Like again, like I worry a lot about permissions and like having parents have to sign up for stuff, um, yeah. just because it's like of some parents are very resist are resistant to that, and I'm okay with it. Like I get why you wouldn't want to like again sign away your information. Yeah, I was thinking for some of the older students, it might be uh, like a fun way to. Or it, it, or if you have, like, so for example, if you're teaching like a duo lesson, a duo private lesson, like a small uh -huh. lesson or something, it would just be one additional way for them to kind of like work together on a project. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's um, there's so many other thing ways to do stuff, and there's you know. PowerPoint games and different things on some of these resources, including like the Teachers Pay Teachers and the Vibrant Music Teaching um, mm -hmm. website. Um, that's mostly like that would be like through their paid version. But um, but she also like there's a lot of podcasts too. You mentioned one teaching these days. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a podcast. I was a guest on the fourth episode talking about music education. But teaching these days is from a group of like the two, um, the girl and guy that are in charge of it right now are two friends of mine that I met when I was teaching in Israel last year. Um, so they're part of the uh, Talma organization, which is about bringing English learning into Israel. And so these are teachers who've taught internationally for years and also teach here in the United States. So they had really just kind of overseen a lot of what was happening, like with the COVID, as far as like, they started the podcast at the beginning of the quarantine because they were just like, well, we've got the time. And slowly and surely, they have started to notice that they're almost keeping a time capsule of what's going on because they're doing an episode every week and every week something's changing. And all of a sudden we're like 2020, like 
well, <laughs> now we have somewhere to see exactly how every, all the news has gone from one place to the other. Yeah, I mean, so I'm putting it up on the screen for anybody that was not sure, what, didn't catch it. Teaching These Days is one podcast, but one that Will was on, and also Vibrant Me Music Teaching Podcast. And she has a lot of resources for teachers and um, and just tips and all kinds of things. And like I said, she's piano mostly, but I I get so much value out of it too. And so sometimes just some of these resources are just um, that we have are like that, but we've compiled a list right now. I have two pages of <laughs> resources <laughs> we kind of like discussed amongst ourselves. And I realized there was a few that I had that I left off actually. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of music games and there's one, let's see. I'm looking at my list, sorry. Uh, Note Rush. Note Rush is an app um, um, and it's, it can be used for any instrument. And it's like a play along thing and it's like a game and it's like also like a note recognition game. For piano, it's kind of like finding where the notes are on the keyboard and playing the right octave. And for other instruments, it's like actually getting the right pitch to come out which is um, sometimes <laughs> it's a challenge to find games for um, non-piano students. This is one of those apps that's for any instrument and I've given it to my students and they all have had fun with it. I don't know how much they play it all the time. I don't always do some of these in their lesson always because we don't have enough time, but, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we might play a game, but it, I, I don't always do the app games with them. I kind of let them do that on their own. We might demo it in our lesson, but. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, when you have a 30 minute lesson, there's only so much you can do online. So I think just sometimes knowing that the progress is going to be slower, which I thought that some people were going to maybe have an issue with. But what I found is that the parents are just really glad that they're engaged in something that they like. Yeah. And so I haven't really gotten. And as long as you're keeping the encouragement high, it's fine. Like, I think that I just had gotten through music school, like, right, in college, they were like, you have to be perfect for this recital. So we kind of have to <laughs> drop that a little bit for our elementary students. Like, just let yeah. them just make their mistakes, correct what you can, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and sometimes it's just a matter of like, you know what, we're going to come back to this next week. Mm -hmm. And and it's just moving on. And it's like, you know what, you're doing fine, but this isn't a – great day for this. So we're going to work on something else right now. And they're like, oh, phew. <laughs> yep, exactly. That's that social emotional of being able to see what your kids are feeling to be able to kind of like gauge their emotional level and to be able to kind of curb things to help them feel successful. Yeah. So if you guys are watching now or on the replay and you want the list of our compiled resources that we have so far that we would be happy to add more to if you have any suggestions. Just write hashtag resources down in the comments. I will contact you and get that to you. And like I said, if you have anything to add, if you have any comments for us, even if you're watching later on the replay and you are not live with us, please comment. Let us know you were there. Give us your input because we know that you are experts too. We are not the only people mm -hmm. teaching. If you are teaching, you are an expert in your area and we want to hear from you what you have found helpful during this pandemic COVID-19 time that we yep. all have to deal with in, in, in our own way and in and, and teaching online. And, and also like if you have tips for explanations for how to teach something specific to online that, and maybe it's not music, maybe it's something creative, um, creative arts too. Those are helpful too, because like I said, like I don't t teach as many piano students, but I use piano resources, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's always all kinds of resources we can help each other out with. And that's kind of what we're having this open communication and conversation today. And I think we could talk for like a couple more hours about it. For day. real. <laughs> and we're getting almost to an hour. I can't even believe we've been talking that long. So <laughs> we probably should be go ending this pretty soon. And maybe we have to have a schedule uh, like a second follow up here because I'm hoping like, you know, maybe in the next week or so, we'll get some comments and things, um, you know, back from some of our colleagues and um, friends that are also music educators and um, in the schools and 
privately and otherwise that they feel comfortable sharing with us. Yep. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff that um, there was that was free for a while when all this happened and smart music is one of those resources that I used like years ago for accompaniment and stuff. Now it's kind of geared more towards band books and there still are accompaniments, um, piano accompaniments and things for um, solos for instruments, but there's a lot of stuff play along for um, developing technique and skills. And you, you, we were using that. You've used that a lot, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so, but um, band directors, um, schools were given uh, free access to that. So I don't know if they're gonna, I kind of hope that maybe they'll sort of continue that a little bit longer. Um, yeah. with, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see what they do. But um, that's another great resource that we've both used. Um, um, I was trying to think of like, I know you said uh, Note Flight, which I've looked at a little bit, but there's also one that's similar to that, I think, which is, I know a lot of people have used is Muse Score. Uh -huh. That's another word. And I, they do have a forum I think like Note Flight does where you can find other songs on there. That's cool. I, I'm not as experienced with that one. No, I don't know anything about that one either so much. Yeah, I had some other um, music um, colleagues tell me about that one. Um, see the, I do have to head out because I have a student at 1230. So awesome. um, yeah, so it's been great. I, I think this has been fun, but yeah, I'm 100% okay with following up with another time, okay? Yeah, we'll schedule another one. Thanks Thank for watching you. everybody. Have a great day and listen to awesome music today. Yep. Bye. Bye.